again with another fresh cut. You are now tuned into the underground. My name is Mbaya. I go by the doctor. If you are not subscribed to this channel yet, you need to do that ASAP. I post barber content that is haircut tutorials, two reviews, you name it, anything to do barbering, I got you covered. Make sure you subscribe. Trust me, all the information that I give out is genuine, it's legit. There's no secrets when it comes to doing what I do. I'm going to show you the full process. So if you want to see full service haircut tutorials, stay tuned. Anyway, if you read the title, we're going to go ahead and get into this fade. I'm going to show you some of the simple steps, which are really a little bit unorthodox, but not too far fetched away from the traditional way of doing things, depending on the head shape that you are dealing with texture as well. You will always have to improvise because every single way of doing things just does not work out the same for each individual. So as you can see, I combed out the hair first and we're going to go ahead and jump into this with the number 1.5 guard and start cleaning up the top, making sure we keep those waves nice and dark. I usually always recommend when it comes to executing a wave haircut is to use a comb when cutting down the hair or before you cut down a hair comb it out first this helps pick up the hair and cut through those waves easy but we're gonna go ahead and create our first guideline by opening the clipper lever all the way open we will go at the bottom this fade is a hybrid style fade which involves many different kinds of styles some people can call this a shadow fade some people will call this a drop fade some people will call this a taper like my guy that is sitting in the chair right now calls this a taper everybody's barber lingo is different this is why building your clientele and barber relationship strong is a good thing so as you can see we have the half all the way around at the bottom of the hair on the side. Now we're gonna go ahead and create what he considers a taper. So I will set in the guideline for the taper. That I will zero out completely. And keep that same consistent process all the way in the back on the nape area, zeroing that out. These are the many details that have kind of ruined the barber industry. Not in a bad way, this is just due to the fact that the internet has made the world really small, but when it comes to barbering, what the internet has done has allowed people to have access to way too much information. There's some details that if you stick to the United States before, I did post this in a video a while ago talking about how the barber lingo that is used in California, in Texas, in Idaho, in PA, New York, whatever, you name it, all definitely varies. Now, if you go on a global scale, this is a whole disaster. And when I say what I'm saying right now is people have way too much to learn from and they don't know how to pick just that one or two individuals. Anyway, I have my one guard on with the clipper lever open, of course. I'm just creating my guidelines right now. I'm gonna go ahead and set that in. So now that I have all my guidelines set in, I'm going to go ahead and start working on my blending by 
working my way from the lower bottom into the 1.5 so i will start off by blending in my zero guard i will use my protege aka alpha from stylecraft the clipper lever open halfway in the middle i will work my way into that guideline soften it up just a little bit and i'll close the clipper lever all the way then slowly after i blend that out i will open it just a little bit and start to erase that completely simple right now i'll move on to the back on the nape area with the clipper lever open in the middle soften that line up a little bit and i will close the lever all the way and start to blend that out slowly taking my time not rushing at all i will slowly start to open the lever just keeping on up with the process not skipping any steps because to achieve blurry blends you need to take your time you never rush this process there's some people that have shorter durations with their haircut services where they can execute such a haircut within three minutes, maybe 10 or 15. That's awesome, that's great. Some of us move a little bit slower than others. This is also due to quality and this depends on how often the individual that is sitting in the chair comes back to get serviced. The easier the haircut is always due to how often the person pays a visit in your chair. So as you can see now, I'm just doing some detailing as I'm blending, avoiding around the ear because we're keeping a little stubble. This is really a stubble fade at the end of the day. So to keep the consistency of what he considers a taper, I have to make sure that I don't go bald. Otherwise he will focus on that, see it be bald and it's not gonna be really good for me on my end. I don't wanna get fired that either, so. Say, I'm gonna go ahead and do what he wants. Anyway, moving forward, using my number one guard with the clipper lever open in the middle, I'm going to go ahead and soften that line up, moving from the right to the left side, keeping it consistent all the way through. And as soon as I am completed with that, I'm going to go ahead and close the clipper lever, making sure that we start to erase that line. So now that I have the line consistently softened up all the way through, I'm going to go ahead and change guards over to my zero guard with the clipper adjusted in the middle. I will go ahead and start to soften that up and slowly close and open. Remember, you have to be the judge. You have to improvise accordingly to what you see. There's gonna be certain things in my tutorial videos that I will share and tell you to do that won't work depending on what texture that you are working on executing a similar hairstyle or just due to the fact that the head shapes aren't the same in case they have abnormalities as i always bring up some people will have certain dips in their heads that just won't allow the trimmer or the clipper to work the same as you can see in this case i am working that lever flicking it up and down, opening and closing it, making sure that I am blending out everything. So now that I am done with the zero guard, I'm going to lose it all the way and open my clipper lever all the way open, making sure that I am using only the corners, flicking out, making sure that all the lines, all that weight line left over is detailed out. This is something that you have to improvise with. Like I said, you have to be able to jump in and out of guard systems. Like in this case, I'm using a shoulder tooth guard. I just moved over from a deep tooth guard and just used the blade on the clipper alone without the guard, jumped right back into a guard, which is shorter teeth on 
I'm going to zoom in so that I can show you what kind of guards that I am working with right now, just so you have an idea of what I am talking about. As you can see, both of these are a zero guard. They are the same, but they do different work. One is more shallow on the left, and the other is deeper. So what I'm simply saying is you need to have these different guard systems in your arsenal. This will help you be able to cut more efficient, more precise, and more definition in your fades and transitions. So moving forward, now that I have all the details all done and completed in the lower half of the fade, whatever's left over, I will come back and touch up. I'm going to go ahead and slap my number one guard on halfway open and start to go in to the 1.5 that I did with the clipper lever open going with the grain. I'm going to go against it with the clipper lever halfway open. So if that made sense, all I have to do now is, of course, improvise. I'm going to open where necessary when I go higher into the hair and close where it makes sense. You want to be able to be the judge. So I'm gonna go ahead and close all the way and start to go in on this fade, making sure that there's transition. You don't want any weight lines. You don't wanna have hair left behind. Whatever you see, remove it. As you can see, I'm improvising. I'm going with the grain. I have a one guard on now. I'm going with the grain, smoothing out everything. If I have to lose the guard, I have to go accordingly based on what I am seeing. Flow right along with what you see. Don't just think a textbook fade or a verbal communicated fade of somebody teaching you something is going to help you. Some of these fades, depending on what your customer, your client wants, you have to execute it by improvising. Right. Speed through this side on the left, since you've already seen the process of how to do this, and I'm going to slow down a little bit and zoom in on this just to show you the details that I have going on here. On the lower part on the back here, that is a do-rag line. Most people don't know what that is. It may look like it's not blended. It is blended, but that is a do-rag line. And I forget exactly what his skin condition is. He may have eczema, if I'm not mistaken. So he does flare up every once in a while. So that do-rag line is possibly a mixture of the both irritation and flaring up but who really knows anyway in a moment after i'm completed with my detailing i'm going to slap a number one guard on and start to soften up that front lineup with the clipper lever open of course and i will slowly close where necessary just to make sure that it's evened out with the front sides on those vertical bars making sure that I keep a consistent level on both sides of the blends. I will go ahead and just do more detailing, keeping everything symmetrical. One thing I always tell most of people that question why both sides don't match up, this is due to the fact that hair on the left grows completely different from the right. Anyway, I'm going to spray some water, as you can see, on the front part of his hairline and around the head. Then I will use a brush to help lay that hair down with a attachment on the blow dryer, of course. This is hot right now, just so you know. One thing that I use water for is to keep everything natural. I'm not a big fan of hairsprays that are in a can or a bottle, as in holding sprays. I'm not a big fan. I'd rather use water. Water is my best friend. It keeps everything natural as possible. It helps lay the hair and control the hair better. In my opinion, you get a better ash line from water. Some people use alcohol, some people use holding sprays. Anyways, I'm going to execute this lineup by starting off in the middle using my Rebel from Stylecraft. I just got this thing out of the box. If you watched my last video review, this thing is money. It's out of the box hitting. I didn't have to adjust anything. This thing comes with a deep tooth blade on it. It's equipped, ready to go. I did a little bit of some field research. According to the internet, people are saying that theirs aren't hidden out of the box, so they had to adjust them. I personally feel as if these things are really truly ready to go. A lot of people nowadays are just really fanned out hardcore about 
zero gapping and adjusting. It doesn't make any sense to adjust everything. As I always say, stay away from it as much as possible. Try to blade out, get used to it, get a feel for it, see how it works. Then if you have to adjust, do it accordingly. Make sure you do it properly. As you can see, this line is coming out pretty good. I haven't adjusted these. I've been using them for probably a week and a half going on two weeks. And I am loving these things. I love the ergonomics of it. It fits perfect in my hand. And as I say in my review, this thing reminds me exactly of Gamma and Stylecraft. Definitely a stronger motor, even though this thing is a rotary. The rotaries nowadays, especially this being a torque motor, is a go. The hitter is my favorite trimmer, hands down. You can equip that thing with whatever style blade that fits for it. You have modifications that you can add that can configure whatever mod that you want on them. And like nowadays you have many different variations or ways of going about this. And look at that, we're all done. If I was letting this play in real time, you would have been really pleased with how well this blade does. I'm going to go ahead and pull out my hitter from Gamma and do some more detail work on that front line. And with this texture of hair, especially with how much we left up top for the waves, you really want to have multiple different trimmers to help you get the job done right. This is what you call refining, using a more sharper tool than the other, because the other two that I use first, the Rebel is sharp, but those are deep tooth blade. And the more precise cut that you want, sometimes it's better to use a shallow tooth blade. So that's exactly what I did, just molding that line in there. It's my favorite part of the cut. I like to be very efficient with that. Uh, I believe that's what I am known for as far as in my community. Most people come to me for the line. So that's my thing. Natural lineups that is. We're not using enhancements. I have no shade on the enhancements. I do use them. I just don't post them. I'm not really die hard or anti enhancements, you know, like I don't go for them, you know, all the way. I do use enhancements, so I'm not an enhancements hater. If my clients want it and they're willing to pay more, why not upsell the enhancements? So if you do get enhancements and if you're in the local Michigan, Midwest area, hit me up, get with me. I got you covered. I do that. No problem. Anyway, this haircut's pretty much complete. I'm just doing some final details around the mustache, making sure everything's all the way fully completed. We want the complete look. He doesn't have too much facial hair, so we're just detailing the mustache. And yeah, this cut's pretty much a wrap after I apply this razor. There's definitely no holding sprays. None of that. This is just plain water, all natural. Some people will ask me in the comment section, what do you use for line prep? Water. You just saw me do that. So you can try that trick out. Otherwise you have holding sprays, which are some of my favorites. Like you have level three. Some people enjoy the Tresemme, Sebastian, whatever you name it, but level three is my go-to. So yeah, but that's that. It's a wrap y'all. I hope y'all enjoyed this content. I hope you find it informative. If you have not subscribed yet, please do that ASAP. I post content daily if I can. All spread out across my different platforms. If you don't have me on TikTok, on Facebook, Instagram, threads, get me ASAP. I got you covered. Definitely subscribe to this channel. You will see more full haircut tutorials just like this giving you the step-by-step -step process of how I achieve these natural haircut blends as well as lineups. Definitely share this video, comment, like it, tell a friend about what's really going down over this way. Tell them about the doctor. Tell them to come tune in with Jay Exquisite. 
Tune into the underground. See what's really going on. I'm just here to help those who are willing to listen get better. I want you to be better than me. I am not the best by any means. I'm just here to give information so you can be amazing. Anyways, I'll catch y'all on the next one.